Just the name invokes thoughts of ingenuity, technological advancements, and pure adrenaline-filled performance. The standard model as Plaid delivers an equivalent 1,020 horsepower from its three motors and can do 0 to 60 in a whopping 1.99 seconds. So how do you improve on a car like that? You get yourself an S Apex model. They've given it advanced carbon fiber panels, buttery soft seats, carbon ceramic brakes and more. The price for this car? Well, it might set you back $249,995 to start, but don't let that price fool you. You might be able to win it instead. I'm excited to be working with Omaze to offer you the chance to win a custom Tesla Model S Apex and support a great cause, the Peterson Automotive Museum. The Peterson Automotive Museum is located in Los Angeles, California, and after its remodel in 2015 has truly become an art gallery for vehicles, a stunning event center and voted by Top Gear as being the best automotive museum in the world, preserving classics and keeping the hobby going. From now until January 27th, Omaze is offering the chance to win this Tesla with proceeds supporting the Peterson Automotive Museum. So for your chance to win, this stunning custom Tesla Model S Apex and support a great cause, the Peterson Automotive Museum. Head to omaze.com slash curiosity incorporated and enter now. The experience closes on January 27th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time and I promise you, you don't want to miss this. Now back to the show. Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. Today we are gonna be going through a trunk that I recently found in the basement of a home. Uh, as soon as I discovered that it had been closed up and stashed away there in the basement and not open since 1961, I figured I got to bring this back and do an, my own episode, a whole episode around this thing, because you don't get time capsule trunks like this very often. This one, this trunk, that's the one I'm talking about. So today, um, we're going to dig into this trunk. We're going to uh, see what's inside, and hopefully there's going to be some neat stuff. Stay tuned, because that's what's next. <laughs> that's what's happening. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, look at the trunk itself. Uh, it was a, somebody named W.G. Curtis. And they were coming from Southampton, England and headed here to Edmonton and Alberta, Canada. What's neat about this is that it was on the SS Antonia, which was a, I should say Cunard line ship, uh, think Titanic steamship, that kind of style ship. And it was built in the early 1920s and um, was uh, either sank or dismantled around 1948. So uh, there's a very limited period of time that this trunk was on that ship, sometime between 1921 and 1948 is when they must have come over. So we are going to get the latches open. And a lot of times people think, oh, I need to have the key. Well, the key, if you have the key, um, it can lock it so you can't push it sideways, but more often than not, they are unlocked. You just have to uh, push it to the side and it'll open right up. The trunk itself is cool. It's um, wood with some steel lining on it. Let's have a look inside. So newspaper, Edmonton Journal, 1961. We have, looks like a little bag of some sort for keeping some special stuff in maybe, who knows? A little Jasmine of Southern France perfumes and what's inside. Okay, there's no perfume inside, but there's little, I guess it is kind of perfumed. There's beads, all kinds of beads off of something. And then these are, uh, there's a note, it looks like. Let's see what the note says. It's actually uh, an envelope. There's no note inside. We'll put the lid back on that. I think that's just uh, perfumed little, uh, like potpourri sort of bags in there, probably to help keep uh, the smell of the must away. Have this Postmaster International Harvester, Return to International Harvester Company, to Betty and Mother. And it's uh, dated 1936. 
and what is it? Magic portfolio for schools. It looks like that's what it is. Little portfolio thing, but it's cool. It's got the stamp on it still. More obviously, there's a doll. Early bisque doll missing his little arms. You can see he's actually stuffed with uh, straw, it looks like. Or Excelsior type material. Another little pouch, another little carry piece. This looks like a smoking, oh no, it's not a pipe. It kind of had the look of a pipe, but I think that's actually the a handle off of a walking stick. Maybe made of antler, carved handle. Can you imagine the walking stick and you'd kind of walk along with that? A pair of really old baby shoes. Itsy bitsy little baby shoes. <clears throat> imagine there's probably a reason why they kept everything in here for so long, you would think. Unless they just never got along around to clearing it out. There's a little room within my heart, and there I always keep my many happy thoughts of you and our friendship warm and deep. Pretty little picture. And is it a compact, like a little powder box? Yes, it is. Still has the powder. Oops. <laughs> well, I had the powder in it. Now the powder is going to be all over everything else, including myself. What does it smell like? Yep, it smells like old makeup powder and a purse and what's in the purse other than some mustiness four and a half yards of artsel rope and a little pencil and a really old piece oh it's not in there but Wrigley spearmint gum wrapper not too much going on inside the purse itself. Not that I was expecting to find a whole lot in there, but a little powder mirror. Let's set that aside. Got a couple other pictures or sayings. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me the light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. Just some motivational and some other little pictures. It's like they were just prepared to decorate as soon as they got off the boat. Decorate and smell good. I'm just trying to wipe the powder off. Juicite, juicer, and core. They're just showing sticking it in inside of the fruit itself and squeezing the fruit. Provide juice without seeds or pulp. Simple to use, easy to clean. So you just jam this tube inside of an orange and squeeze the orange. And apparently a waterfall of orange gushes out. That'd be nice. If that's how it works, there's another doll head. And this is German. AM Germany 351. So that's an older head. Somebody could build a doll around that, you know. You sometimes you you find the heads. This would have had little eyes that went in there that probably opened and closed when you tilted the head. It doesn't have the eyes right now, but that's a porcelain doll head. It's in, actually the head itself is in good shape. Little baby picture. Somebody's baby photo from years gone by. It's kind of a little bit of everything, you know, keepsakes and pictures, little sort of uh, river scene. It's a print though, it's not an actual picture. Let's see, what do we have? This is tied up nicely with string. Feels Kind of rubbery. It's almost wrapped up like you'd wrap up flowers. Let's see. It is a doll. Oh, she's got a cracked head, poor thing. She's seen better days. But this is quite an old one. This antique doll. And it probably broke 
maybe while being inside wrapped up in here, it looks like all the pieces are there. Someone's tied up around her head, so I'm guessing she suffered a crack at some point. They put string around her to keep the pieces together. So she'll need a little bit of repair. Another little doll. Actually, it seems like there might be a few dolls in this trunk. Red and white stores. Kit Scotty, Alberta, 1943. So a receipt for something. What were they buying? Mm, can't quite make it out. Three Park? Mm, maybe maybe somebody, maybe the original owner would have been able to decipher that, but no, oh, what's this? That's like a uh, reflector off of an old car or motorcycle or something. That's kind of cool. It's got the bracket on there to mount it. So you get a little, maybe above your license plate or something, you get a little extra reflector for safety on the back of your vehicle. It's neat. Oh, 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 check this out. It's a Gene Autry cap gun in like perfect condition. It still, still works, I think, more or less. It might need a little bit of, yeah, it's still going. This needs a little bit of cleaning, but that thing is in pristine shape. I wonder if I'm gonna find the holster in here. That's probably like, you know, $120 piece to the right collector, especially if I find the uh, holster for it. Okay, yeah, I'm finding some cool stuff down near the bottom. Not that it all isn't cool, I guess, but cap guns are kind of my alley. This looks like a little shirt. Let's see. Authentic legendary Indio, uh, legendary Arizona Indian sun designs by Farrell. Hmm. So is it a skirt? I think it's a skirt. Or, uh, oh, I see. It's not a skirt. It's a uh, apron. It's like a really old apron with this Indian sun design from Arizona. Designs by Ferrells. Hmm, cool. Might be some other old clothing and stuff in here. There's a cup. Ironstone China, Baker and Company, England. There's a wallet. It's gotten a little musty from sitting in there. Well, let's see if we can get inside. If I can move the clip, there we go. And nothing, nothing. It's an empty wallet. Somebody else was here and they just put their old used wallet back in. We did actually find a wallet at this house that had um, Canadian shin plasters in it, which were like a 25 cent bill. So you really never know. That's why you gotta open those things up. This feels like it might be another doll. Take, see if I can't, uh, Get the string off of this. We'll see what's inside. Okay. It's a, oh, it's not a doll. It's a mohair teddy bear. With uh, jointed limbs and jointed legs. I feel, I feel awful. <laughs> you know, you know, it's, yes, it's a teddy bear, but, um, he has a jointed neck too. You know, this actually might be, I don't know if it's stiff, but it is of that sort of quality. It's mohair, it's excelsior filled. Does it have a growler? I'm listening. Stiff bears, when you tilt them, it goes, because they have this little sort of can growler inside. I don't feel anything like that. He doesn't have a button in his ear that I can see, but this is a very old mohair teddy bear. And he's uh, generally pretty intact, other than his poor little ends of his paws there, which have seen better days. And let's see what year this uh, newspaper is. Again, what year is it? 1961, okay, yeah. So everything in here is basically 1961. Let's see, how much was shampoo? Two for 77 cents. Bubble bath, 77 cents. Aromatic cologne. How much is cologne? 99 cents. 
It feels like things were just more affordable. Mind you, we're probably only getting paid like a buck an hour, so I guess it's all relative, really. Really old Christmas wrapping paper. And cloth. Some handmade, uh, it looks like a little tea towel or tea cozy. Oh, it's a little bag. Look, it's a little, it's a little purse, like a little uh, carry purse. And it's hand embroidered from the looks of things. That's neat. Somebody will think that's cool. Keep on digging. Let's see what's in the little box. It's a jewelry box. With, uh, I think those are for stockings. Not really much for jewelry. Oh, that's a little silver um, letter opener. A little chunk of silver in there. It's almost, it's 25 bucks an ounce here or something like that now. So you've, even finding like a half ounce of silver is still kind of nice. Let's see. Another little mohair teddy bear. Seems like there's a lot of sort of ladies or kids keepsakes in here. <laughs> this is heavy, whatever's in here. And it's tied up. You know what? I think that's just a lock of hair. Somebody kept a big lock of their hair. Hmm. Yep. I don't even think I need to untie that. That's just a big old bundle of hair. <laughs> Leather buckles. Oh, another doll or a stuffed animal. Can't tell yet because there's paper over her head. Oh, there she is. She's a little bit more complete. She has tiny little stubby arms. That doesn't seem right. She's got little hands. <laughs> but probably English. 1920s, judging by that sort of straight bang haircut. Got her outfit. She's got little socks on. Her arms don't seem right. It seems like somebody has shortened those arms a great deal. Her arms should be about like down to there. That would just be weird to have a kid with little stubby arms. Who knows? Maybe that's the way they made it. It just seems off. <laughs> but another doll, nonetheless. I should probably make a little uh, assortment of all the little dolls that I'm finding. Set them aside together. It's odd that there's one random cap gun in here with all these antique dolls. That's probably about the fourth or fifth antique doll that I've found so far. Oh, there's another one. See, on the back of the neck, you can usually tell that's another German. German made doll with its period clothing. I'm definitely getting a collection of newspaper out of all this. Looks like old table linens. Another doll. I feel like this was like the little dolly storage um, trunk. Let's see, what are the little books about? Let's see, from, with kind of wishes, 1934. And what is it? The Door of Heaven. There's a couple religious sort of books. And another little picture. Pictures were so small, I guess, you know. I wonder if you would just hang a whole bunch on the wall in one place. Because, uh, like, what would you do with a picture that size? I guess if your house was smaller. And we've got some of these embroidery. It looks like they started. Maybe they didn't get around to finishing it. 
Or did they? Let's see. Uh, well, they got pretty far. It looks like they were working their way around the outside and they just didn't do all the rest of their crosses. A little project. Maybe they were doing that on the boat. Some old, old slippers. Another little book. Looks like a little Psalms. Or a little Bible. Let's see, what does it say on it? Common Prayer Hymns. Yeah. And where did they visit? McLeod, Canada. Right, Fort McLeod. It's a purse K. Okay. Getting to the bottom here. I mean, there's an awful lot of wallets, but pretty much everything has been empty so far. Letters and envelopes with nothing in it, but where is it from? Department of Finance. Feels like this might be another doll inside of here. Let's find out. Or bear, or something. It's a dog. And he's all bundled up in some kind of little blanket. That's probably his little blanket that kept him warm for years and years. And what does it say? Edmonton Journal. It still has its little Christmas tag on him from when he was uh, given as a gift all those many years ago. Okay, I'm going to clean up some of this paper here and then we'll see what's left in the trunk and the bottom. With the paper cleared out of the way, I can actually see the bottom. We've got um, a little bit of antique fabric or old fabric. We've got some cross-stitch kind of embroidery sets that are unfinished. A little book on love and friendship going back to probably the 1930s or so. Don't see a date, but a lot of these books have been more 1930s. There's a postcard in here. I was feeling pretty blue while a longing deer for you when I saw this little frog with his head above the bog, perhaps he's listening, hoping to, wishing he might hear from you and the note of cheer I caught gave me a deer a happy thought. Cute, to Betty from grandmother. I noticed there was a few postcards in here. <clears throat> One, the McDougal Methodist Church, that's here in Edmonton. It still stands. Glass bottom boat at Seal Rocks in California. An early tourist attraction. And we've got the uh, Hudson Bay Company store in Calgary. All the different places they've been. Hotel Virginia, Long Beach, California. Public Library in Central Park, Calgary. Sadly, that building is long gone. It's a pretty building, though. Uh, CPR Bridge Medicine Hat. And 8th Avenue, looking east, Calgary. So they obviously spent some time around Calgary. Uh, 8th Ave or Stephen Avenue is still a pretty busy, bustling place. A lot of those buildings are still there. No streetcars anymore. But uh, a neat place to stop in if you're ever in the Calgary area. There's something heavy-ish in here. Some kind of stone, maybe a petrified wood. And I think these are chunks of petrified wood in that bag. Little painting. It's not really a painting though, it's just a print given December 12th. Good luck, it says on it. More little cards, prosperity throughout the coming year. Calendar from 1940. And some crinoline and another little embroidery set. Well, that's a uh, Pretty full box of stuff, really. Lots of, you know, it's a little uh, snapshot into somebody's life from way back when. But I think what it was was mainly a keepsake box with their dolls. And a few projects, like little embroidery projects and uh, needlework that they had going on. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that cap gun. That was a pretty good find. Let me get this stuff loaded back in the trunk. And uh, get this mess cleaned up off the floor. Well, that's it for the trunk opening. And honestly, part of me kind of smiles thinking about 
the little girl who was on her way from England to the New World, to, to the West, and had her box of dolls with her, but also decided to pack a Gene Autry cap gun. <laughs> because, you know, it's the West. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a fun thought that this that a little girl had this cap gun. Uh, is the only kind of um, Western type toy in with all the dolls and everything's so carefully wrapped up. It's a fun little snapshot looking back, um, packed away 60 years ago, um, but probably really this stuff has been in here, it looks like, since the, the 30s or 40s. So a neat pile of stuff. I'm uh, pretty happy uh, with the finds and honestly, it was just a lot of fun to go through. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna get this packed back away and um, yeah, it was fun going through the box with you. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure to do so. There's always lots of videos and fun stuff happening around here. Um, I'm going to go see if I can find the holster for this somewhere else in the garage <laughs> and keep myself busy for the rest of the night. But have a wonderful night, guys. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now.